today we are going to start with metabolism of carbohydrates and our first topic is glycolysis glycolysis in simple words agar hum define kare to glycolysis is the breakdown of glucose aur agar hum isko dekhe to this is the hub of carbohydrate metabolism and every cell of our body depends upon glycolysis for atp for the production of pyruvate which is then converted into acetylic coa which then enters the tca cycle for the formation of atp which is the energy rich compound so if we define glycolysis again it is the oxidation of glucose to provide energy glucose is oxidized and atp is produced as well as all these intermediates of glycolysis are basically the intermediates of some other metabolism for example in fatty acid metabolism and protein metabolism all these can be interconverted so first of all before going towards the steps of uh, glycolysis first of all we are going to know the two major hormones which are important in the metabolism either that is carbohydrate lipid or whatsoever the major hormones involved in metabolism are insulin and glucagon what is the function of insulin if we see in general for carbohydrate metabolism insulin is basically involved to lower the blood glucose level the blood glucose level is lowered with the help of insulin and glucagon it is the antagonist of insulin so it basically increases the blood glucose level so blood glucose level is increased by the glucagon now what will be the effect on glycolysis what is actually their glycolysis is basically the way through which the cells utilizes the glucose so in turn it decreases the blood glucose level so insulin will enhance the process of glycolysis whereas glucagon will decrease the process of glycolysis now glucagon the mechanism of action of glucagon is phosphorylation that is cyclic amp second messenger system it produces cyclic amp in the cell cyclic amp will activate the kinase and kinase will phosphorylate the enzyme it means in glycolysis all the regulatory enzymes when phosphorylated will be deactivated means glucagon will deactivate the process of glycolysis glucagon when able will phosphorylate the enzymes of glycolysis they will become deactivated the process of glycolysis will slow down in response to this glucagon all the steps the regulatory steps will slow down now what is insulin insulin basically performs its function with the help of dephosphorylation of enzymes when all the regulatory enzymes will dephosphorylate eventually the process of glycolysis will enhance now there are two major types of glycolysis that is anaerobic glycolysis and aerobic glycolysis what is anaerobic glycolysis anaerobic glycolysis occurs in those cells which lack mitochondria for example red blood cells and parts of eyes whereas aerobic occurs in those cells which have mitochondria and have efficient supply of oxygen now what is the end product of aerobic aerobic actually produces pyruvate and anaerobic will produce ultimately lactate now we are going to move towards the pathway of glycolysis we should keep in mind insulin and glucagon before going towards the pathway we should know that insulin will enhance the process of glycolysis and glucagon will de enhance the process of glycolysis pathway number 1 whenever the glucose will basically enter the cell it must be phosphorylated why because glucose can be transported across the membrane but glucose 6 phosphate is impermeable to the cell membrane so in order to utilize the glucose it must be entrapped within the cell so in order to entrap the glucose is first converted into glucose 6 phosphate there is the enzyme that is utilized for the conversion of glucose into glucose 6 phosphate with the utilization of atp the phosphate group comes from the atp and this is hexokinase hexokinase basically has four isozymes hexokinase 1 hexokinase 2 hexokinase 3 and hexokinase 4 hexokinase 1 2 and 3 these three enzymes basically they are found in most of the tissues most of the tissues have this enzyme whereas hexokinase 4 enzyme it is present in some of the tissues for example liver pancreatic beta cells or it is present in the kidneys now what is the difference between hexokinase 1 2 3 and hexokinase 4 hexokinase 4 is also known as glucokinase now if you see here hexokinase 1 2 and 3 and hexokinase 4 the km that is michaelis constant for hexokinase 1 2 and 3 is low means it has high affinity for glucose so whenever there is some amount of glucose 
ultimately it will get activated hexokinase 1 2 and 3 whereas hexokinase 4 requires more amount of glucose to be activated it means its michaelis constant value is high it means in order to half saturate this enzyme more amount of glucose is required and it often occurs when the blood glucose level rises in the liver and in the pancreatic beta cells this is basically important as a glucose sensor and in order to utilize the glucose whenever the blood glucose level rises. So hexokinase 4 value of Km is higher whereas for hexokinase 1, 2 and 3 value of Km is low. If you see this graph, this at x axis we have the concentration of substrate and on y axis we have enzyme activity. If you see this graph, this is sigmoidal. This graph is sigmoidal and this is basically for hexokinase 4 or glucokinase means as you increase the concentration of the substrate the enzyme activity will increase they are directly proportional to each other whereas its Km value is higher higher Km means that it have low affinity for glucose whereas this graph which is basically for hexokinase 1, 2 and 3 its affinity for substrate is greater means it have lower Michaelis constant whereas the maximum velocity is basically for hexokinase 4 it has more velocity v max is the maximal velocity hexokinase 4 or glucokinase have maximum velocity greater than that of hexokinase 1 2 and 3 why because this hexokinase 4 is required in the rapid utilization whenever blood glucose level rises above a certain level in the liver pancreatic beta cells or kidneys this hexokinase 4 is basically involved in the rapid utilization of glucose so its v max is higher so Km is also higher for glucokinase and Bmax is also higher for glucokinase. Now we are going to see this first step is also a regulatory step of glycolysis. Glucose is when converted into glucose 6-phosphate, its regulation is for hexokinase 1, 2 and 3, simple regulation is that greater is the amount of glucose, greater is the activity of hexokinase 1, 2 and 3. Greater is the amount of glucose 6-phosphate, due to product inhibition these enzymes will be deactivated if you see hexokinases glucose will activate their glucose will enhance their activity whereas glucose 6 phosphate will decrease their activity and if we see glucokinase that is hexokinase 4 there is a protein which is present in cells that is known as glucose regulatory protein that is glucokinase regulatory protein now this glucokinase regulatory protein basically binds with the glucokinase takes it away from the cytosol that is towards the nucleus now this is the fructose 6-phosphate what happens actually glucose 6-phosphate is converted into fructose 6-phosphate in glycolysis this fructose 6-phosphate will cause the binding of glucokinase regulatory protein with glucokinase and it will translocate to the nucleus and this enzyme will be inhibited so this enzyme is indirectly inhibited by fructose 6-phosphate Fructose 6-phosphate will inhibit glucokinase, the third difference between the both. This is inhibited by fructose 6-phosphate by the help of glucokinase regulatory protein. And this will be inhibited by glucose 6-phosphate and it will enhance by glucose. So this is the third major difference. This is the first regulatory step, the glycolysis comprising of three regulatory steps. The first one we have done. The second step is basically the irreversible step that is glucose 6-phosphate will be converted into fructose 6-phosphate and by the help of enzyme that is phosphoglucose isomerase glucose that is an aldose sugar fructose that is a keto sugar the glucose will be converted into fructose that is isomerase phosphoglucose isomerase enzyme will be utilized and glucose 6-phosphate will, will be converted into fructose 6-phosphate now the next step that is fructose 6-phosphate will be converted into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate okay? fructose 6-phosphate will be converted into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. This step is also a regulatory as well as the rate limiting step of glycolysis. Fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. This is the regulatory as well as this is the rate limiting step of glycolysis. Now another ATP utilized here to convert fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate and the enzyme that is utilized is phosphofructokinase 1 its regulation is very important one of the most important question of prof that is phosphofructokinase 1 now phosphofructokinase 1 regulation occurs basically with the help of phosphofructokinase 1 regulation basically occurs 
with the help of two major that is fructose 2 6 bisphosphate and the other is the allosteric regulation that is basically with the help of the energy levels of the cell if the energy levels of the cell are high we do not need glycolysis because atp is already present so atp and citrate citrate is basically one of the intermediate of tca cycle okay so citrate and atp both will inhibit this enzyme so this enzyme is allosterically being inhibited by atp and citrate whereas amp amp is a signal of amp is a signal of basically amp is basically a signal of low energy so this amp will basically cause phosphofructokinase 1 to become activated so atp citrate and amp these are allosterically regulating the phosphofructokinase 1 now the second major step is basically the fructose 2 6 bisphosphate formation from fructose 6 phosphate now fructose 6 phosphate is converting to fructose 1 6 bisphosphate that is a step of glycolysis now fructose 6 phosphate can also be converted into fructose 2 6 bisphosphate with the help of enzyme that is phosphofructokinase 2 the phosphofructokinase 2 enzyme basically consists of two domains one is kinase and the other is phosphatase domain the kinase domain will basically cause the conversion of fructose 6 phosphate into fructose 2 6 bisphosphate whereas phosphatase domain will convert this fructose 2 6 bisphosphate back to fructose 6 phosphate now this enzyme is also regulated that is phosphofructokinase 2 it can be phosphorylated it can be dephosphorylated now as we already know that phosphorylation is a function of glucagon whenever glucagon is going to phosphorylate an enzyme in glycolysis it will inactivate this enzyme whereas whenever dephosphorylation will occur due to insulin it is going to activate that enzyme so when dephosphorylation will occur insulin will dephosphorylate the phosphofructokinase 2 fructose 6 phosphate will be converted into fructose 2 6 bisphosphate why because whenever dephosphorylation will occur its kinase domain will become activated when kinase domain will become activated ultimately fructose 6 phosphate will be converted into fructose 2 6 bisphosphate and when there is phosphorylation of this enzyme ultimately its phosphatase domain will become activated and it will convert fructose 2 6 phosphate, phosphate back to fructose 6 phosphate now this fructose 2 6 phosphate greater is the amount of fructose 2 6 phosphate this phosphate greater is the activity of phosphofructokinase 1 so this enzyme will its activity will enhance greater is the amount of fructose 2 6 phosphate greater is the activity of phosphofructokinase 1 when its activity will be greater whenever its kinase domain is activated and when kinase domain is activated whenever this enzyme is dephosphorylated and dephosphorylation is due to insulin whereas glucagon will cause phosphorylation inactivation conversion of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate into fructose 6 phosphate lesser is the amount of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate ultimately it will cause its inhibition so fructose 6 phosphate will not be converted into fructose 1 6 bisphosphate next step in fructose 1 6 bisphosphate will be converted into glycyl aldehyde 3 phosphate and dihydroxy acetone phosphate it is one of the reversible step of glycolysis by the help of enzyme aldolase two of the regulatory steps have been done one glucose into glucose 6 phosphate second fructose 6 phosphate into fructose 1 6 bisphosphate rest of all the steps are reversible whereas the last step of the glycolysis is irreversible so what happens fructose 1 6 bisphosphate by the help of aldolase enzyme will be converted into glycyl aldehyde 3 phosphate and dihydroxy acetone phosphate dihydroxy acetone phosphate by the help of enzyme isomerase will be converted into glycyl aldehyde 3 phosphate now the first oxidation reduction reaction of glycolysis is this reaction in which glycyl aldehyde 3 phosphate will be converted into 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate in this step the enzyme that is utilizes dehydrogenase that is glycyl aldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase when glycyl aldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase will act on this enzyme glycyl aldehyde 3 phosphate ultimately NADH will be produced and 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate is produced this NADH must be reoxidized that is it must be converted into NAD plus NADH must be converted into NAD plus if NADH is not converted into NAD plus what will happen ultimately this will not be converted into NAD plus when there is deficiency of oxygen and whenever there is deficiency of oxygen ultimately there will be anaerobic respiration that is anaerobic glycolysis okay 
तो एनोरोपिक ग्लाइकोलाइसिस के अंदर क्या होगा अल्टीमेटली कि एन ए डी प्लस विल नॉट बी फॉर्म अल्टीमेटली क्या होगा कि आपका पायरोवेट जो है दैट विल बी कन्वर्टेड इन टू लेक्टेट ठीक है सो फॉर दिस स्टेप एन ए डी एच शुड बी अगेन कन्वर्ट इन टू एन ए डी प्लस विद दी यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इन एरोबिक इन एरोबिक ग्लाइकोलाइसिस फाइन अदरवाइज इफ दिस इज नॉट कन्वर्टेड इट विल लीड टू एन एरोबिक ग्लाइकोलाइसिस नो दिस वन थ्री दिस फॉस्फोग्लिसरेट इज देन कन्वर्टेड into three phosphoglycerate one of the phosphate group is removed and this phosphate group is removed and there is the first atp molecule production first atp molecule production occurs when one three this phosphoglycerate is converted to three phosphoglycerate by the enzyme kinase that is phosphoglycerate kinase enzyme this is also a reversible step ultimately three phosphoglycerate is converted into two phosphoglycerate the phosphate group from carbon number 3 is, uh, is then shifted to the carbon number 2 by the enzyme mutase that is phosphoglycerate mutase So it is there is the formation of two phosphoglycerate. Now two phosphoglycerate by the enzyme anulase will be converted into phosphoenol pyruvate. Now when the phosphoenol pyruvate is converted into pyruvate by the enzyme pyruvate kinase, the last step of glycolysis and the third regulatory step of glycolysis when phosphoenol pyruvate is converted into pyruvate. Ultimately, क्या होगा कि pyruvate kinase enzyme will be utilized and another molecule of ATP will be produced. So one molecule is produced over here. One molecule is produced over here by one molecule of glyceraldehyde three phosphate. Now this is also converted into dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Is also converted into glyceraldehyde three phosphate. So one more molecule of ATP, one more molecule of ATP. Four molecules of ATP and two molecules of NADH. Whereas two molecules of ATP are utilized. One here and the other utilized here. So we can say net there are two ATP net net two ATP and two NA. dh in aerobic glycolysis now the last step pyruvate kinase is also regulated how it is regulated with the help of fructose 16 bisphosphate this fructose 16 bisphosphate increases the activity of pyruvate kinase to produce more pyruvate this is known as feed forward regulation this is known as feed forward regulation now the last i and g means insulin and glucagon what will happen insulin will dephosphorylate whenever pyruvate kinase is dephosphorylated it will become activated it will convert phosphoenol pyruvate into pyruvate and whenever glucagon is basically the enzyme that is acting on the the hormone acting on the cell it will phosphorylate and phosphorylation will ultimately cause the inactivation of pyruvate kinase and phosphoenol pyruvate will not be converted into pyruvate and the process of glycolysis will be inhibited so this is all about the general pathways of glycolysis